Hey guys, welcome to the 190th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, we're going to continue working on our reader class. And like I said in the previous tutorial, we're going to be reading strings. So the first method that we're going to create is just a method that will read a string at the current position. So we're going to say public, oops, public string read string and then we're just going to have the user pass through the length of the string that they want us to read. So we're just going to say int length. Alright, and we're going to be using the read characters method inside of the binary reader class to read the character, to read the string. So we're going to say br.readcharacters and then the length of the string will be the amount of characters that we want to read. So we're just going to say length right there. And you're probably wondering why we're not using the read string method. And that's because the read string method inside of the binary reader class doesn't allow you to specify the length of the string that you want to read. It just assumes where the string ends, and I prefer to do it this way. Alright, and since this returns a character array of all the characters that it read, we just need to convert that into a string. So we're just going to say new string, and then just pass uh, this character array that this read characters method returns uh, through the constructor of the string struct and basically it'll just convert that character array into a string. And now we're just going to return the string that we created. And now whenever we go to call this uh, read string method, what it will do is it will just read the characters that the user wants us to read. So if the user passed through four, they wanted us to read a four character long string, it would just read four characters and then convert that character array into a string and then return it. All right. And the next uh, method that we're going to be creating is a method that will read a Unicode string. And I haven't really talked much about a Unicode string, and I'm not even sure if I have, but basically what a Unicode string is, is it's a string where each character is represented by an int 16, or a 2-byte integer. So for example, if we were to create a Unicode string that read Adam, we would just do A, D, A, M, and a regular string would just look like like that, how you'd normally type it, just add them. So, as you can see, the key difference here is each character takes up two bytes. So this A is two bytes long, this D is two bytes long. So, you're probably wondering why this is even useful. Why would they ever store characters this way or strings this way uh, when it would take up more space? Well, that's because not all characters can be represented by one byte. For example, um, a lot of characters in different languages, such, in like Ch such as in like Chinese or Japanese or Korean or something like that, um, uh, the, a lot of the characters inside of their language you have to represent with two bytes. So if you were trying to write in like Korean or something inside of one of your programs and you wanted to store that string, you would have to store it in uh, Unicode string. And there are two different types of Unicode strings. There's big endian Unicode string and there's little endian Unicode string. And a big endian Unicode string basically means that the int 16 is represented in big endian. So as you can see right here, this is a big endian Unicode string. So since um, A is represented by 41, we just read this int 16 right here and it's 41. So same as just a regular string. But if we were to make this a uh, little endian Unicode string, it would look like this. It would be A, then D, then A, then M. So what it would do is it would go 4100 0, 0, instead of 0, 0, 0041. So this is uh, big endian and this is little endian. Alright, so now we need to actually read those strings. So we're just going to create a new method called public string read unicode string. And then we're just going to have the user provide the length of the unicode string that they want us to read. So we're just going to say int length. Alright, and basically what we're just going to do is read the bytes of the string. So if the user wanted us to read this string atom right here, they would enter 8 since this is 8 bytes long right here. And we would just read 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 bytes. Alright, and then we just need to convert that into a big endian Unicode string since this is a big endian Unicode string right there. So we're going to determine um, what string to read based on um, what byte order the user has defined. So we're going to say if um, byte order equals byte order dot big endian, then we're just going to read the bytes and convert it into a big endian Unicode string. So we're just going to say br dot read uh, 
fight, read, fight, oops, read, fight, and then the length, which would be the length that the user passes through. And now we need to convert this into a big endian Unicode string since this will only occur if the user's byte order is big endian. And to do that, we're going to have to use the encoding class. So we're going to say encoding dot um, big endian Unicode. And then we're just going to want to get the string from bytes. So we're just going to use the get string method to convert it into a big endian Unicode string. And then we're just going to want to return this since this uh, get string method returns a string. So we're just going to say return. All right, and then we're just going to want to have it return a little endian uh, Unicode string if the user's byte order is little endian. So we're going to say else um, return encoding, oops, encoding dot Unicode, and you don't have to say little endian Unicode, it's just Unicode. So Unicode dot get string, and then those bytes. So br dot read bytes, and then the length of the string that the user passes through. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial, so see you guys.